What's up there, Mr. What is that up there? What do you hear up there? What is it? Let's have a look in there. Oh, looky. What do we have here? Let's take these off. Let me take this other knife off. My, oh my. What is that, mister? What is that in there? Take off the screen. There. And now, let's bring it over to the light a little more. That right there. What is that? What is that, baby? Hmm? What are those things? So now we have a story for mom, don't we? And you're gonna get in there and try to paw them, of course. So, mom, I was outside exercising, and the first interesting thing I have to tell you is that this little girl I heard who's crawled up, climbed up onto the kitchen counter, was caterwauling and and whining the entire time that I was outside. Don't get too close. No, don't paw them yet. In fact, I might not let you paw them at all. Uh, anyway, she was caterwauling the whole time I was out there, climbing up the screen door. And of course, that caterwauling brought by our stranger from the other night. I'm calling him Whitey because I don't know what his real name is, but Whitey the cat came lurking out of the shadows again because he heard mischief upstairs caterwauling inside the house. And I, I'm pretty sure, I'm not positive because I haven't looked at him physically, but I'm getting a stronger impression that, it, that he's a male. Anyway, so there I am exercising, and Whitey was just so intent on getting upstairs to uh, find mischief, but he doesn't, but Whitey doesn't know me. <laughs> so, you know, I try to coax him, <laughs> mischief, what are you going to do if he gets on you, huh? What if that beetle gets on you, then what are you going to do? Huh? They got a strong grip and it's not going to come off easy. So, anyway, Whitey was... <laughs> okay, now look. Now look. Now look what you did. See, now they're... They don't like that. <laughs> See, you're getting me tripped off. <laughs> You're getting me tripped off my story, Mischief. So anyway, Whitey, like I said, Whitey doesn't know me, you know, so he won't come close to me yet. You know, I, I kept calling out to him to try to get him to come. And then whenever I go up the stairs, you know, to the top of the stairs to do another lap, when I turn around to go back down, he'd be partially up the stairs but then he'd see me coming down and he'd go back down again. And he kept doing this a couple times. And uh, finally, I guess he just gave up and he wandered back off into the darkness. But uh, leave it up to mischief, pheromones and all, and cat calls and all. And she brought Whitey back. And I imagine the day after tomorrow when I exercise again, She'll probably do the same thing. And uh, he'll probably come back. Look, let me turn this guy over. Anyway, so I was exercising and these two, look, there we go. Let me try to get this in focus. Hold on. Can you get an idea how big they are? Just don't hurt it, mischief. Let me see. Let me see. Let 
I think this is a female, maybe. Oh, no, no, no. Uh oh. <laughs> it took off my arm. Let me see. Come here, you. No, Mr. Okay, now this one. Hold on, let me see here. Yeah, there's a, oh, there's a good focus. Okay, this one is a young male, I think, because, uh, hold on already. Hold on, let me see here. See, you can see the horn real good on this guy. And, as I told you before, let me get him off my shirt. <laughs> there goes mischief again. Hold on, I wanted to see your barriers I can show. Mr. Wait. Hold on, it's going to take off again. Hold on. Let me see. Just still for a minute. Sorry, Mom. Let's put it up to the light here. Maybe this will help. Oh, no, that one's trying to get out. The female. Anyway, uh, it's just moving too much. I'm trying to show you that. Okay, hold still. There, 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 there. You see the back? Hardly any hair on there. there. See back there on the abdomen, on the very end? Hardly any hair, right? And see the horn there? Oh, there's a, see, now I can really see the horn. Okay, so I think this is probably a male. Now let's get, ah, get off of me already. Let's get the other one. Now this one, beast, these things are very strong. Hold on here. Hold on. Mr. Wait. They're hard to see. <laughs> this is, don't try to fly yet. Sometimes they get loose in the house when I'm messing with them. Come here. Okay, there. I got you good. No, no, no. Just be still. Be still. They got a really strong grip. Plus, they have these two spines on their legs. So, when they grab you, you can feel. Okay. Oh. Ow. Be still already. How am I supposed to? Right. Now, you happy? Plop it on the... They're so strong, I could barely manage them, Mom. Anyway, this is the... Why aren't you in focus? Get in focus. Ah, be still already. Let me turn this one around. If I could just get it... Ah, okay, almost in focus. Wait, focus, focus. This one's not focusing here for me. Come on, I wonder. <laughs> this is very hard. Oh, he's trying to fly out of there. Meanwhile, I'm struggling with her to. Will this camera please focus already? Anyway, you can. Almost. See on the, on the, I wish to get a real, I wanted to focus. It's moved so darn much. Anyway, come on, be still, just for a second. They're so hard to handle. I don't know why it doesn't want to focus. <laughs> you hear the male bug. The kid's trying to fly and he's landing on his back. Anyway, could you see the fuzzy red on the back of this one? That's how you know it's a female. Plus, like I said, the horn is shorter. But this thing is just so... Mischief, just keep it up already. I'm having a hard enough time here with this. 
female here. But you get an idea how big these are? And these aren't even full grown yet. They'll get a little bigger than this. But these, like I told you before, these are the strongest beetles in the world. Rhinoceros beetles. And in any case, in the, and in this case, as I said, these are coconut rhinoceros beetles. And they are destroying our palm tree, coconut palm tree population here because uh, once they merge out of the ground, they go and they burrow right to, oops, now you're down there. They burrow into the bark of the coconut trees and then up to the top and they feed on the young fronds that are coming out of the very top of the coconut trees. And you can tell when a tree's infested. No, you're not gonna fly out of there. Um, if you look at a coconut tree, you will see when, as the fronds grow and sprout out of the top, there's a pattern because all the edges of the leaves are cut off. And that's how you can tell real quick when a, a coconut tree has been infested Plus, of course, there's these holes about half an inch wide. Yeah, about half an inch wide, I guess. Not an inch. Well, maybe an inch. Maybe up to an inch wide where they burrow into the bark. And what I was also going to say was um, the fact that I put these two on the same night under my night light outside, you know, the floodlight is just another indication that it's the season of beetle love. Oh yeah. No, I'm not talking about 1960s EW bugs. I'm talking about rhinoceros coconut beetles. Um, they spend, like I said before, they spend most of their time underground. And then I think what happens is the dry season kicks in uh, this is just a theory, but I think what it is is the earth starts to warm up even more and it causes the the larva, the grub, to go into the final stage, which it's called, they're called instars. So they go into the final instar stage and then they come out of the ground. And so the fact that I caught two today and that first one, what was that, a couple weeks ago, is a clear indication that they are starting to emerge. And once they emerge, from the ones I've had before, as I've kept them here in the house, once they emerge, like in the, in the final stage as adults here, they live about four months and then that's it. The females lay eggs, then they die, and then the grub develop underground, like in those pictures I showed you. So maybe we'll hold on to these two a little bit and I'll feed them carrots. They love to eat carrots. What do you think, mister? Should we hold on to them for a while? Which one is this? Let me see. This is the female. The one who let me show you her hairy butt. Oh, oh they're all almost in focus. There she goes. But see, if you get one of the on you, you're not going to like it. <laughs> Look at this. Where do you think you're going? Oh, when I caught that first... Oops. <laughs> when I caught that first one, I, I came upstairs and sat on top of my uh, garbage can outside so that when I was done exercising, I could bring it back in again. But, uh... It flew off of there. I thought it, normally, you know, they play, when you, first, when you catch them, they play dead. You know, they don't move for a while, like a lot of bugs do. But this one, this female, was very feisty. She flew over to the screen door. So I thought, man, she's going to fly away where I get to show her to you. So I stuck her in my pocket with my iPhone. And, and I'm doing my exercise up and down, up and down. 
And while I'm doing it, doing my exercise, this feisty female, she keeps crawling out of my pocket and up onto my skin on my belly and my side, you know, and it, it, there's a slight pinch because, you know, like I said, they have these spines or spurs on their legs and they do have a, a very strong grip. <laughs> so I had to keep taking her off of my skin and sticking her back in my pocket till I was done. And then I kept exercising. Oh, no, then I was done and I pulled out my iPhone and I searched the ground like I always do, but I never know what I'm going to find. And that's when I found the second one. Oh, she's trying to fly. Did you see her? I didn't catch it fast enough. Anyway, oh, oh he, he tried too. Thing is, when they fly, when they land, they like dive bomb. You know, they just go bam right into the ground. Sometimes they hurt themselves. If they, and if they hurt themselves too much, uh, they might get injured where they can't move, and then the ants come out. And sometimes you find them on the ground just covered in ants, because these ants are aggressive. When they see something, boy, they go after it. So, there you have it. Mr. and Mrs. Coconut Rhinoceros Beetle during the season of beetle love just like the cats right now this time of the year a lot of things are thinking about love including this girl here <laughs> right mister you're just so enthralled by these huh look at those beetles mister this is the longest video we've made this is 17 minutes now it's gonna be big for mom to download but uh we just gave mom another science lesson so we're going to bring this video to a close with the beetles walking around and mischief just sitting there watching them and pawing them oh i just love to see one of those get on you oh what would you do it would not be easy for you to get it off baby no it would not they're very active. They want out of their bed. But we'll, I'll put them in something else and give them a care and see if they'll eat it. If not, we'll just let them go. Okay, it's almost 18 minutes. Very cool. Oh, there we go. See, they try to fly and blam right back on, the, on their backs again. <laughs> okay, 18 minutes. We're done. Bye, Mom.